Hi everyone, in today's video I am showing you my quick, easy, and delicious apple pie filling for your apple pies. It's coming right up. I will be releasing my full apple pie video later on, but for now I'm showing you part two, the apple pie filling. Hi everyone, welcome back to my kitchen. I'm Amy from Neurotic Mom Bakes and I will be showing you my apple pie filling uh, made specifically for apple pies, but it could also be used as a filling in between cake layers. So let's get started. For this apple pie filling, I like to start with Granny Smith apples. Um, they are the most tart of all apple varieties and they're also quite, um, they're not soft at all, they're, they're quite hard. And I find that those work the very best for apple pie filling because you have that really, really tart apple, but then you have like the sweet brown sugar, butter, cinnamon syrup, and it just balances out perfectly. So to make this filling, this will fill a good size nine inch apple pie. Um, I like a lot of apple pie filling in my pies, so I'm going to err on the side of making maybe too much, then too little. So you're going to need eight large Granny Smith apples or 12, I've seen smaller ones, 12 smaller ones. I have these giant ones. I think eight will be more than enough, but whatever I have left over, I can refrigerate for up to a week in the refrigerator um, and use for uh, cake filling in between cake layers and it's delicious. So first thing I need to do is I'm going to peel and slice up my apples. If you wanted to um, peel your apples ahead of time, and prevent them from turning brown, it's um, okay to add a little splash of lemon juice and kind of toss it with some lemon juice and that will help the um, apples from, keep them from turning brown. I was talking so much, I almost put the peel in the pot. Okay, get this out of the way. I like big chunky pieces of apple in my apple pie. However, if you were making this um, maybe specifically for a cake filling, I would dice them up quite a bit smaller. But for pies, I like big large pieces. Should we see if I can do this in one, one peel? doing it. Come on. Done. Oh, that little piece broke off. That's pretty good though. All right, let's do another. Okay, so five ginormous Granny Smith, was it? Yeah, five. Fills this up, that's what I needed for this. But let it be known that when I made this pie last week, I used 12 small Granny Smith apples. It just kind of depends on the size. But I have this saucepan filled all the way up and I'm going to add three quarters of a cup of brown sugar, packed brown sugar. I have a quarter of a cup of butter here and I'm just gonna kind of Chop it into some smaller pieces. And then I'm going to add three teaspoons or a tablespoon of cinnamon. This is going to go over on my stove top and I'm gonna turn my heat on medium high and just kind of stir it occasionally until all the butter melts and you kind of have a syrup going. Okay, now I'm going to take my saucepan over to my stove top and on medium high heat, I'm just gonna stir it occasionally just because I don't want the sugar to burn on the bottom. Um, and I'm going to bring it to a boil. Now, if you are using this for a cake filling, it's not going to cook anymore after the stove top. So you wanna let it cook until those apples are nice and soft. However, if you are using this for a pie filling, it is going to be baked again in the oven. So you just want them barely, barely tender because they will cook more in the oven and you don't want mushy apples. Okay, so I'm just on a medium to medium high heat right now. And 
Just kind of stirring it. I don't want the sugars to burn on the bottom, so I'm just stirring it every once in a while. And those apples are going to um, release a lot of juice, so you'll get more syrup as this cooking process goes along. Okay, I'm gonna let that sit for just a second. And at the very end of this cooking, we are going to add a slurry of cornstarch and water, and that's going to act as a thickener. So I'm gonna get my bowl and do that right now. So I'm just gonna have this prepped and ready to go once my apples get to the stage I want them to be. So I'm going to measure out approximately two tablespoons of cornstarch. And then I'm going to add two tablespoons of water and just kind of mix it up. Okay, I have that ready to go. Let's check on my apples again. Oh, perfect. You can see that syrup is starting to form on the bottom. And I'm just going to keep this on a medium high heat and just stir occasionally until they get to the tenderness that I'm looking for. I'm making a pie today, so I just want this to just get to the crisp tender stage because it will continue to bake in the oven and get softer. I like, um, in my apple pie, I like a, I don't like a mushy apple. I don't think anyone does. Oh, this is looking and smelling so good. I just love apple desserts. Apple fritter, apple pie, apple turnover. Oh, they're so good. Depending on how large you cut your apple chunks, um, will determine how long they need to cook. If they're smaller, it will cook a lot faster. I have big pieces in here, so it's gonna take a little bit longer to soften up. I'll just kind of use my fork to test out the tenderness. It's getting close, we're getting close. All right, now that I have the consistency that I want, I'm going to get my cornstarch and water mixture, and I'm gonna pour that in. I'm just gonna let that kind of bubble for 30 seconds, 20, 30 seconds, and then I'm gonna turn the heat off. I'm gonna pull the apples off the heat because I don't want them to cook anymore. But that cornstarch adds as a nice thickener. It will get that syrup nice and thick so it's not running all over out of your pie. All right, I think this is the perfect tenderness, just barely, barely soft. Okay, now we have our finished, absolutely delicious apple pie filling. If you are going to use this as a filling in between cake layers, make sure it cools all the way down. If you're doing it for a pie, I'd let it cool a little bit, but it doesn't need to cool all the way down. So there you have it. If you have any questions about this recipe, just ask in the comments and I will come back to answer. And if you would like to see more recipes and tutorials like this one, Subscribe to my channel. See you next time.